This is a letter from the other side, addressed to God chasers and not men pleasers. Dear child, pay attention to what I say. Listen carefully to my words. Don't lose sight of them. Let them penetrate deep into your heart, for they bring life to those who find them and healing to their whole body. Like Apostle Paul, I have gone through the glorious contest. I have run the race. I have kept the faith. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. I am home. If you only focus on the pain of my transition, you will miss its purpose. Therefore, Tejumo Jesu Bagbearuye. Focus on Christ alone and forget the mystery behind my death. God did not kill or take me away. I was attracted by the glory of heaven. Dear government, I never pandered to human applause. My pastoral commitment and decision making was based on the principle, what is God saying? To this vision, I gave my all. I held the fort. Striving on and never looking back. Please do the same till you breathe your last. Make a vow to uphold our legacy. Give the best of your time, potentials, resources, energy, intellect, among others. Pursue God, his kingdom, and purpose with rigorous hunger. Do God's work excellently and not shabbily. Do it now that it's day. For night comment where no man can work. Dear ministers and leaders, I appeal to you to be faithful to the word rather than the worldly fame and applause. The glory here is far greater than your imagination, so focus on Christ alone. Be faithful, faithful to the word, faithful to the Lord and Master Jesus Christ, faithful to your marriage vows, faithful in pastoring and preaching the word, faithful, remain faithful to the end so that you might be welcomed into glory with the words, well done, my good and faithful servant. Never be too busy or preoccupied to care about a lost person. Take time to share the gospel with others. Leave the 99 and pursue the one. Never give up on a soul. Dear friend, there is a time of opportunity when you are alive to respond to the message of salvation. If you refuse, you would watch your life dry up like a drop of water and conclude like wise King Solomon who said, vanity upon vanity, all is vanity. Because no one takes anything out of this life except those who have made the exchange to invest it for eternity. So be wise and stay with me wherever you are jesus i repent of my sins today all i have what i am cannot satisfy my thirst jesus i give my life that i might have eternal life that you offer come into my life and be my lord and savior 
Let me live my life in obedience to you and keep me to your coming kingdom. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. You're welcome to God's family. Oh, the joy, the joy, just because you have surrendered your life to him. Dear all, till we meet on this other side, keep basking in God's love. From yours in the city of God, EA. Dear friend, there is a time of opportunity when you are alive to respond to the message of salvation. If you refuse, you would watch your life dry up like a drop of water and conclude like wise King Solomon who said, vanity upon vanity, all is vanity. Because no one takes anything out of this life, please, except those who have made the exchange to invest it mask. for eternity. So be wise and stay with service. me wherever you are. Jesus, I repent of my sins today. All I have, what I am, cannot satisfy my church. Jesus, I give my life that I might have eternal life that you offer. Come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. Let me live my life in obedience to you and keep me to your coming kingdom. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. You're welcome to God's family. Oh, the joy, the joy, just because you have surrendered your life to him. Dear all, till we meet on this other side, keep basking in God's love from yours in the city of God, EA.
Praise the Lord. Yeah, we want to welcome everybody to today's uh, farewell service for Pastor Florisho Emmanuel Abino. Uh, at this point, we're going to take the processional uh, aim for this service uh, with the scripture interlude. And the hymn is Great is Thy Faithfulness. And I'm going to yield to the National Choir Master uh, for this work. Thank you. Flash it. Joined with all nature in money 
fort witness to thy great faithfulness mercy in the law great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness morning by morning new mercies i see all that i needed i ain't had provided great is thy faithfulness lord out to me Pardon for sins and the peace that endure it. Thy own dear presence to share and to guide. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessing all my with ten thousand beats are oh great is thy faithfulness oh great is thy faithfulness morning by morning new mercies I see all that of thee that I it had provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord, my Father. There is no shadow of toiling with thee. Thou changest not, dear fail not. Now forever will be your great is the faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies I see all that I be. That I and art provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Great is the faithfulness unto me. Amen. Let's have our seat. We want to have the first scripture reading for this glorious service. As I will be inviting Ore Abino 
to read the scripture, the first scripture reading for this glorious service. Are you now? You are welcome. morning everybody. I want to thank you for honoring the memory of my life, of my dad's life, by coming here. Um, my name is Oreolo Avino, and now we are reading First Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in debt, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the, the Lord's word, we tell you that we were alive as still we were alive That we, that we who are, alive, are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not preside those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of an archangel, with the trumpet call of God, and the dead, and the dead are still, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive are left and are left. We will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so, we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Um, we are also reading Acts 13, verse 36. You don't know. Now, when David had served God's purpose in his own generation, he fell asleep. He was buried with his ancestors, and his body decayed. We shall be listening to him from the choir. Give our all. Lord of heaven and earth and sea, to thee all praise and glory be. How shall we show our love to thee, giver of all? Let's listen to the tune.
Praise the name of the Lord. Shall we rise up for prayers? Father, in the name of Jesus, our God and our Father, we thank you. The song says you are the giver of all. Indeed, you gave us your son. And most importantly, that we are here today, it is you that has given us the strength to be here. Father, we thank you because we are counseled to thank you in every situation. Even as we are here, we return all the glory to you. Receive them in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, this service is unto you. Of our own, we can do nothing. But with you, all things are possible. We therefore ask that whatever will be done today in songs and ministrations, in the word, in all the things that will be done in this service today, Spirit of the living God, we ask that you take preeminence in the name of Jesus Christ. Take absolute control in the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone that will do one thing or the other, anoint him afresh for this moment in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we take authority over this place. Every spirit that was not invited here or powers uninvited, we return them back in the name of Jesus Christ. Spirit of the living God, we ask that you take control. In the end, the glory will be yours. And the blessing will be ours. Thank you for hearing and answering. For in Jesus' precious name we pray. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. I'd like us to be upstanding as we give praise to the Lord this morning. Father, we just want to thank you. We want to give you praise. We want to honor your name in this place today. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. Hallelujah. We worship your name. We magnify you. We honor you, Jesus. We adore you, Lord. We give you praise. We return all the glory unto you. Thank you, Father. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Unquestionable, you are the Lord. Unquestionable, you are the Lord. Unquestionable, 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 you are the Lord. Unquestionable, you are the Lord. Alpha and Omega, unquestionable, you are the Lord. Unquestionable, 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 you are the Lord. You are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. Say you are God. You are God. From beginning, from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. You are God. You are God. You are. For 
rescue man you are God all by yourself you've got times and seasons in your way you called for the light out of darkness you don't need a man to be the God you are and you have chosen to call us your own one more time you got times and seasons in your hand you called for the light out of darkness you don't need a man to be the God you are. You have chosen to call us your own. Say you are God. You are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God all by no place for argument you are God all by yourself father we think most high God most high yes Lord yes Lord and I'll be Worshiping That's what we do All of the days Of my life And I'll be In your presence Worshiping All of the days Of my life Say I'll be I'll be worshiping, worshiping all of the days, all of the days of my life. I'll be here, I'll be here, standing in awe of you, God, worshiping all of the days, all of the days. Of my life, and I'll be lifting hands, even when it isn't easy. I'll be. And we'll be bowing down, bowing down before you all of the days of my life. And I'll be, Jesus, bowing 
down All of the days Let's bow before him Bow before him I'll be Bringing a sacrifice of praise All of the days All of the days of our lives. All of the days of our lives. All of the days of our lives. We've been lifting hands to you. We've been bowing before you. We've been worshiping of your throne. Oh, oh, So we can say, you are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. We make a declaration today. Jesus, you are good and your mercy is forever. You are good and your mercy is forever. Ah, hallelujah. Hallelujah to you. Hallelujah to you. Oh Lord, you are good and your mercy is forever. Ah, are you ready to shout? Shout hallelujah, 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 hey, hallelujah, 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 hey. shout hallelujah, 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 hey, shout hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, yeah. Hallelujah. That's what my song will be. That's what my song will be. That's what our song. That's what our song will be. Say Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That's what that song will be. Oh, yes, that's what that song will be. Oh, that's what that song will be. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That's what that song will be. That's what that song will be. Yes, Lord. That's what that song will be. For that could not hold him captive, even in the grave, Jesus is Lord. For that could not hold him captive, even. Even in the grave, my Jesus is Lord. 
My soul, a soul, doth magnify the Lord. And by spirit, praise His name. Oh, Father, could not hold Him captive. He born in the grave. Jesus is love for them could not hold him captive even in the grave. Jesus is Lord. You are Yahweh, Alpha, Omega. You are Yahweh, Alpha, Omega. You are Yahweh, you are Yahweh, Alpha, Omega. You are Yahweh, you are Yahweh, Alpha. One more time. You are Yahweh. You are Yahweh, Alpha, Omega. You are Yahweh, you are Yahweh, Alpha, Omega. Let's put our hands together, give him praise. Give him praise. Amen. We may have our seat. As the choir take off for the next assignment, we want to sing. You rest me up. Choir, over to you. When I am down and so my soul so weary, when troubles come and my heart bored down, then I am still and waited in the silence until you come. And stay a while with me. You raise me home to shine like a sun on mountain. You raise me up down and saw me see. I
when I am done and oh my soul so weary when troubles come and my heart body be then I am sealed and wait till him the silence until you come and sit a while with me you raise me up oh, the lion on the mountain you raise me up When I am dead and all my soul go when troubles come and my heart burden be Such a while with me. Somebody help me say you raise me up. You raise me up so I can stand on mountains. You raise me up to walk on stormy sea. I am strong when I to your feet and say you raise me up Lord you raise me up so I can stand on mountains there are mountains we must stand on bearing the banner of Jesus on the top of the mountain the mountain can't crush us I am strong because you were there yeah, yeah. when I Jesus showed us you raised me up to more more than my ordinary self. Sing it again, you raised me up to I can stand on mountains. You raised me up.
sing and no goodbye. The in-laws visit and are given as be no tears in the Sorrowed by sadness, me love one and friend must die. More there is sunshine and gladness, there'll be no tears in the sky. No sorrow. Oh. 
you choir. God bless you. God bless you. I say God bless you. Now we want to go to the second scripture reading for today. And uh, that will be taken by Runia Abino. Immediately after uh, the scripture reading, the Kingdom House Choir will be coming up. That means item now for now. Item nine is jettition. So after the scripture reading, we'll be having choir administration from the Kingdom House. Good morning, everyone. My name is Ronnie Abino. Um, I want to thank you for honoring my father's life, Pastor Emmanuel Kolansha Abino. I'll be reading the Bible scripture, Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the seas. Though its water roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, there is a river whose stream shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in, God is in the midst of her. She shall not be removed. God shall help her just as the break of dawn. The nations raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our refuge. Come behold the works of the Lord, who has made desolations in the earth. He makes war cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariot into the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I'll be exalted among the nations. I'll be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob's re our refuge. Thank you for reading. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah. Yonder place. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Yonder place where the stars are shining bright Jesus Christ, he will make your things all right In his time, he will make me really see Otherwise, it really won't be right and he's gonna put on my heart to rest. And he's gonna put on my heart to rest. And he's gonna put on my heart to rest. Oh, yonder place. Oh. Things are right in his time. You will make me really see all the why. Yeah. Oh, yonder place. Yeah. Jesus Christ. You will make the make of things are right. In his time, oh, 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 and it's gonna put on my heart to rest. And it's gonna put, gonna put on my heart to rest. It's gonna put on Put on my heart 
gonna put all my heart to rest. Oh, Above. No more sorrows, no more pain. Then no more crying in this place. The darkness fed away. No more sorrow, no more crying in this place. No more night, no more night in the city. No more night, yeah. No more night in. Help me sing. No more night, no more night, night has seated. No more night, no more night. Say no more nights, no more nights. Yonder place, join the cloud of witnesses in your hand is the baton of faith that has been passed to you what will you do will you mourn or you will run and finish well yourself god bless us in jesus name triumphant just join the cloud of witnesses in your hand is the baton of faith that was passed to you will you mourn or you will run will you mourn when you should run oh
House choir, may God bless you. We shall all finish well in Jesus' name. I want to move straight forward to item 11 now, and that is to hear the eulogy biography from our, our brother. I'm going to be calling Ed Agwengabi not to handle that. You are welcome, sir. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Celebration of life, biography of Pastor Emmanuel Mufolon Sholu Agbimiro Abino. Pastor Emmanuel Mufolon Sholu Agbimiro Lua Shegun Abino was born into the family of Pastor Dr. Elijah Ludile Abino and late Matron Felicia Luremi Abino on October 11, 1967 in Aradagun Badagri, local government of Lagos State, Nigeria. Although the parents lived in Mushin at the time, he was born in Aradagun, his father's village, by the special instruction of God to the father. Before his birth, the parents had lost two sons who died in the infancy. While in prayers, the Lord instructed his father to send his mother to his parents in the village as soon as she conceived. When she conceived, she was sent to his village and handed over to a praying church that took care of her and prayed fervently with her. The Lord gave them the victory and Emmanuel was born. His father gave him the names Emmanuel, which means God with us. Mufal on shore, I hand him over to God for safekeeping. Uluag Bemiro, the Lord upheld and sustained me. While his Martin, our grandmother, gave him Olua Shegun, the Lord has won the victory. Thereafter, Emmanuel and his mother moved back to Mushin. He loved the Lord right from his young age. At various times, while his father preached and taught in the church, he would come and fasten himself to him, talking at him and attempting to speak. As he grew, he was particularly fond of street evangelism, which his father and the church regularly engaged in, so much so that even as a little child, he regularly preached on the streets. His favorite call to action was, Brethren in this neighborhood. Emmanuel attended Labake Memorial Northern Primary School in Ilasamaja, Mushin. He also attended Twins Nursery and primary school owned by late Mrs. Joe Martins, wife of late Pastor Joe Martins, who owned Premier Northern Primary School on Otelmi Street, Pakpajau. Emmanuel was a very brilliant child, so much that he left his strange primary school in primary four to attend one of the best secondary schools in Nigeria at the time, Adiola Odutola College. A boarding school for a secondary school education. Before Lawrence had to leave Adiola Utola within two years because a battle with sicknesses. The 
finished his secondary school education at Ajuboni Grammar School in Okota, Isolo, Lagos in 1983. The absence of his parents' direct supervision in the boarding school he attended had adverse effects on him. He backslid and picked up several bad habits upon his return to Lagos. He lost interest in the things of God and cut school. He associated with bad friends who further drew him away from the Lord. As a result of his lack of interest in school, he, did not, he didn't enter the university until several years later. At this point, many people gave up on him. Some suggested that he should become a welder's apprentice. Others said God wouldn't turn him around again. Many saw him as a reproach to, his ministry, to the ministry of his parents. However, his parents never gave up on him. At every opportunity, his ever praying maternal grandmother, late Mrs. Abigail Akinremi, and mother, who Matron Felicia Abino, will continue to draw me to his ears that he was born to be a minister of God. They never stopped praying for him or loving him, even when he almost left this house. Soon, God answered their prayers, and the redemptive power of God turned Olua Shegun around again. He returned to Jesus, his first love, only that this time the intensity of his zeal and passion for the Lord was unbridled. He gave his all. He became sought after by everyone whose child had given them concern. Parents till this day use him as a point of contact for God to turn the life of their children around. Meanwhile, Pastor Follinshaw eventually got admitted into the Lagos State University, Lasso, in 1989. He became the evangelism secretary of the Gospel Student Fellowship, Lasso chapter from 1989 to 1993, while friend and cosmic Pastor Mike Omolaye was the president. He graduated from Lasso with BA in English in 1995, he was the best overall student in Lasso. He graduated a year later than scheduled because of constant strikes in the university system. He went on to obtain his master's degree and several other certificates. Emmanuel, as you can attest to, was multi-talented and multi-skilled. Even while growing up, he fixed any and everything in the house, be it furniture, electricity, television, and other appliances, car. He just seemed to know what to do. Though he studied English as a first degree in the university, anyone who heard him speak could easily mistake him for a lawyer or politician. This brilliance led him to self-taught himself computer programming, networking, and electronic commerce at a time when ICT in the banking industry was in its infancy. He partnered with his friends and they designed internet banking solutions for several banks, including Standard Stroud Bank, Standard Charter Bank, UBA, Platinum Bank, etc. Even developed a software called Doctor Secretary that could be used by doctors for diagnosing illnesses and providing solutions. His brilliance and intelligence endeared many organizations to him who saw his expertise on several issues. This should include UNESCO, the Nigerian National Assembly, MDCN, Obasanjo Schools, several federal ministries and parasitters, churches etc. Introduced concepts and design solutions which put him in high demand in and outside Nigeria and across the world. This took him to several states in Nigeria and several countries around the world including Mali, Zimbabwe, Togo, Benin Republic, Ghana, Germany, United Kingdom, Israel, Italy, Philippines, etc. Fallen short sure got married quite late but kept himself pure the entire time. Although many thought it was because he had a medical problem, however, this is not, not the case. It was because he was completely sold out to the Lord and also because he viewed marriage as a very sacred institution. He was against divorce and didn't want anything and didn't want to marry anyone that would take him away from the Lord. He married his sweetheart, late Kemi Abinon Niojo on June 19. 2004. The marriage was attended by thousands of people. They were blessed with four children, namely Orelua, Aronia, David, and Ziona. 
He was very fond of his wife and children, and they equally loved him. You will often see him playing video games with his children as a means of relaxation. He loved his wife dearly. He, he took her on travels abroad. The dev, death of his wife, whom he fondly called Mama Kay, in June 2020 was a devastating blow to him. Pastor Foranshaw sure loved his parents. They were also proud of him. While growing up, he assisted them during their financial challenges. He would hawk eggs on the street of Lagos for his mother. His, this love for his parents continued until adulthood. In fact, he relocated from Abuja where his business was traveling to Lagos in order to take care of his parents who are getting older and especially his mother who was seriously ill. He had big dreams for them. After the passing of his mother in 2014, he stepped up even more to assist his father in ministry, giving him wise counsel and taking several burdens off his shoulder. Also, he loved the siblings who equally loved him, adored him. They fondly called him Boda. He would crack jokes with them, cook for them, and help them with anything. He had nicks them for them. He was very bold and would confront anything even while growing up. He had passion for and played table tennis, football and basketball, draft, chess, dominoes, monopoly, etc. Fallon Shaw was also an excellent poet. He had a compendium of several of his poetry. He was a voracious reader. This gave him confidence to provide solutions on almost any subject. He read anything and everything. He wrote at least five books that are yet to be published. He was working on a movie titled Warrior. He built his own cryptocurrency that was to be launched in 2021. He also, helped, he also loved to help anyone who came across his way. He gave his knowledge for free. He helped many set up their businesses when no one believed in them. He related freely with everyone, including children. The youths particularly loved him because he gave them a listen here. In him, they found a person who wants to study applied and gave them solutions. Emmanuel was sold out to God, had an uncommon boldness, and lived a prayerful and fasted life. He would go on several days of marathon fast without food or water. He once fasted for an entire year, praying daily for the salvation of souls for every country in the world. He did this for about three consecutive years consecutively, and he took the heavy persuasion of his parents to make him stop. He had an uncommon boldness of speaking truth to power. He was fearless, humble, generous, uncompromising in holiness, and precise in the prophetic. He was an excellent teacher. He had a conscientious and sacrificial approach to ministry. He did not want to be remunerated for his service to the Lord. At every opportunity, he turned down compensation. He also flowed in several gifts of the Spirit, among which was a strong prophetic function of open visions. During the Thanksgiving service held after the funeral ceremony of his late mother, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him and he prophesied to his father that the Lord still has many lands for him to cover, and it wasn't yet his time. This strongly encouraged his father at the time. Pastor Emmanuel was always burdened with ideas and innovations for the body of Christ and especially government. He introduced several innovations, too numerous to mention, into the media department, management, and all the departments of the church. There is hardly any department or ministry where he did not leave his footprints. After he was appointed as a rotational member of the Executive Council of Government in January 2021, he began to develop plans for improving the financial capacity of each government member, church growth, efficient administration, technological repositioning, and possessing all the countries of the world for Jesus on the platform of government, etc. Pastor Foreign Shah be not detested lazy approach to ministry or doing ministry for financial gains. He was an addicted worshiper, a dangerous giver, and someone who had compassion for the less privileged and the lost. Though he was tall in stature, it's hardly for you to find everywhere he's standing, he's always taller than everybody. 
he was gentle and peace loving. Because of his giftings, Pastor Emmanuel was engaged in several ministries and departments in government. He was a member of the choir in headquarters church of Joy Ibadan, graduated from Government School Evangelism, was HOD Media, member of Government Compensation Committee, member of Government Executive Council. He taught at the Ruben George Memorial College School of Theology, Government Leadership Academy, etc. He was a frequent guest speaker at various churches and conferences such as Mewalek, GSF, Government International Convention, OSAM, PFN, etc. He was the founding pastor of Government Kingdom House at Amuel Dauphin, that this was his dream. Even though his death appeared premature and shocking, Paul Onishaw was never afraid of death. Never. He became seriously in March 2021 20, and slept in the Lord on April 28, 2021. 20, Prior to his person, he saw saints of old who had passed on. He mentioned seeing late Pastor Dr. Harry George, founding General University of Government. His late mother, Matron Felicia Abino, his late wife, Kemi Abino, etc. He was attracted by the glory of heaven and was no more. God didn't take him. Paul Onishaw is survived by an aged father, four children, five siblings, nieces and nephews, and thousands of life he has touched across the world. May his soul rest in perfect peace. Thank you. Thank you, sir. May so rest in perfect peace. We now want to bring up Benga Abino. Oh, sorry. Um, David Abino for the third scripture reading. God bless you. Let's cheer him up. Let's put our hands together. Good afternoon, everyone. We're going to we're going to open the scripture from from Romans eight twenty eight to thirty nine, and we know that all things work together for good to who to those who love God to to those who are called according to His purpose. For whom he foreknew, he he also predestined, predestined to be comforted to the image of the Son, that he might be the firstborn among among many brethren. Moreover, whom he blessed. Predestined, this he also called, whom he called, this he also justified, and whom he justified, this also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who, he who didn't spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is who justifies, who is he condemned? It is Christ who died and for, furthermore he is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also make intercession of for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? 
shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword and as it is written for your sake we are killed all day long we are we are counted as sheep for the slaughter Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor, pow nor principalities nor powers nor things present or nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you very much, David. Who was Emmanuel Follonshaw Abino? I know we have been hearing so much about him, but the multimedia departments, they want to take us through some memory lane. As they are getting set to turn us on, the third paper of this day, today, 28th day of the month of May, devoted page 37 to talk about the time, the life, and the time of Pastor Follonshaw Abino. Outside this place, this paper is 200 naira, but for the sake of this service, they have reduced it to 100 naira. So the ushers have it with them. I want you to have this so that we can keep it in our diary when we leave this place. As we are going to be viewing what the multimedia will be showing to us, it's also good and equally good to have this because sweet is the memory of the righteous. So over to you, multimedia. God bless you. The giver of all is also the taker of all. Job recognized that in the book of Job chapter 1 verse 21. He says the Lord gave He said the Lord gave Blessed be the name of the Lord. I am crazy about God. I'm ready to die because of Jesus. There's nothing that I can't do because of Jesus. I'm addicted to him. It's, it's like a drug for me. I want to see his face. I am thirsting after him. Get to that level. This is a letter from the other side addressed to God chasers and not men pleasers. Dear child, pay attention to what I say. Listen carefully to my words. Don't lose sight of them. Let them penetrate deep into your heart for they bring life to those who find them and healing to their whole body. Like Apostle Paul, I have gone through the glorious contest. I have run the race. I have kept the faith. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. I am home. If you only focus on the pain of my transition, you will miss its purpose. Therefore, Tejumo Jesu Bagbearu Ye. Focus on Christ alone and forget the mystery behind my death. God did not kill or take me away. I was attracted by the glory of heaven. Dear government, 
I never pandered to human applause. My pastoral commitment and decision making was based on the principle, what is God saying? To this vision, I gave my all. I held the fort, striving on and never looking back. Please do the same till you breathe your last. Make a vow to uphold our legacy. Give the best of your time, potentials, resources, energy, intellect, among others. Pursue God, his kingdom, and purpose with rigorous hunger. Do God's work excellently and not shabbily. Do it now that it's day. For night comment, when no man can work. Dear ministers and leaders, I appeal to you to be faithful to the word rather than the worldly fame and applause. The glory here is far greater than your imagination, so focus on Christ alone. Be faithful. The most part, they asked that Jesus should be crucified. They did not ask for his sweet death as Herod the daughter did for John the Baptist, whose head was severed by the king's head, sword of Herod's soldiers, but requested for his slow and painful death. Jesus was crucified and there was none to rise up in his defense. He was left alone on the rugged cross with nails burning deep into his flesh hair and blood gushing out from his side. Amidst the pain and confusion, he cried, My Lord, my Lord, why hast thou forsaken me? To be forsaken by man creates emotional pain, but to be forsaken by God is unimaginable. The earthquake that the prospect of receiving the blood of his creator the elements of the aqua are destroyed. What a strange day is this. In spite of the darkness of the moment, the travesty of justice, it was a day of hope. A day that changed the course of history for creation and all humanity. There was no one to intercede for Adam and Eve when they sinned against God. They were thrown out of the Garden of Eden never to enter again. It was a day of hope. Man now has access to God. The blood shed of Calvary is now a bridge over the gulf created by sin and Satan. Hell is now an option, not a mandatory destination. Man can now choose his eternal home. The sun that once set now rose again as Jesus rose from the dead the third day, revealed himself to people and went back to heaven. What will you do with Jesus, which is called Christ? Some use him as a social ticket. It's cool to be called a Christian when you are far from the shores of persecution. For some, the church is a nice meeting place to hook up with friends and meet new people and get entertained by a motivational preacher who has mastered the art of smooth delivery and some of the best voices serenading your soul into the high heavens. Where you live does not really matter as long as you come to church. Will Jesus die for this? A social hangout? This same Jesus who was the lion, lamb, and many other things will return as a judge to many and as a justifier to some. Your name may be in the books of the church, but is it in the book of life? What will you do with Jesus, which is called Christ? The right answer to this question back with the right commitment, unveils the purpose of living and unfolds the part of eternal life. Jesus gave all of himself on the cross. He now wants all of you. He wants to be your Lord and Savior and lead you to life everlasting. He died to save you so that you will not go to hell. And he's, at, he's knocking at the door of your heart even now, gently. He wants you to open and allow him to come into your life. What will you do with Jesus, which is called Christ? Accept him. Give your life to him. Say, Jesus, I know I am a sinner. I know you died for me. I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Come into my life now and let me live the rest of my life in service and obedience to you. In Jesus' name, amen. We believe you have been blessed. Please look.
alata ibo na padimi ki gba otun lede asiko ibo tutunde alata ibo na padimi ki gba otun lede My people will come if you wise. Don't take money before you go vote. I beg you, shine your eyes right well. Oh, the future of your picking to your hand. Oh, don't take money before you go vote. My little boy, when I was coming, said, that our pastor, don't sell your food. The children were captured, you know, they were so captivated when this came up. We want to thank God for a life well spent. Very briefly, we want to have the chaplain, as Pastor Tosin will be getting set to anchor the next item, item 14. The chaplain wants to give a parade to honor our pastor. So, over to you. You're welcome.
Praise the Lord. But this section is the uh, tributes and testimony section. And again, we want to thank you for being here to honor and celebrate a life well lived. Because Pastor Emmanuel Abino lives on. His life touched so many before he left this side of eternity. He planted seeds that we know will bear fruits for many generations to come. So this section will focus on the impact of his life and ministry. Even though he's not physically present with us, we know that death cannot rob us of the blessings that we have received through him. Uh, we have a few people that will be doing that uh, as selected by the family. The first in that category is the Lasso English Student Association. He has some colleagues of over 27 years that they've been together and they're here to pay their respect. And they are led by Mr. Bimbo Fatuki. Please let's put our hands together for them as they come forward. After that, I want Brother Bengadela and to please uh, come forward. And then the uh, Regis Provost, Pastor Dr. Aino. Thank you. Praise the Lord. A brief correction. The name is Bimbola Toki Phillips, not Fatuki. I represent the English Study Students Association of the Lagos State University chapter, class of 93-94, of which Folonsho, Emmanuel Folonsho Abino was one of us. Ably represented here, I have Mr. Dikbo Adiyeye. Please stand up for recognition. I have Mr. Kolakbo Adeniro. And um, still on the road, we have Mrs. Bola Azain, representing the full class. Oh, Mrs. Bola Azin, please stand up for recognition. We feel honored to be here, and I feel honored to be here as the ex-president of that association for that set. Lying here is an all-rounder. You've heard, you've seen. His only degree was a Bachelor of Arts Honors degree in English from Lagos State University. But look at how he finished. Before we got to 400 level, our final year, Boulanger had discovered a passion for computer education. Those of us who are very close to him, myself, Dekbo, then Pastor Michael Molawi, government Philippines, we used to think he was crazy because we were studying English, and for long sure we were going to the library to be reading computer. We were wondering what his passion was. But ladies and gentlemen, this is the life of a man who wanted to actualize a lot of things. He wanted to passionately change the, the world. He wanted to passionately change this country. You saw his advocacy about the election and the votes. That was who Fallon Shaw was. He was someone who advocated for the masses. He believed so much in equal, e e equality, justice, and fairness. Fallon Shaw did everything late. He went to school late. He entered Lasso late. He graduated late, but he finished his race early. It was not his making. It was not his doing. It was his passion, his calling. Like somebody said, he is a living testimony of self-advancement. He's a living testimony that you can do 
and you cannot limit a limitless God. Those of you who knew his initial upbringing, somebody who lived in Mushi, who walked in Mushi, what would you have expected of him? Many of his peers today are dropouts. Many of his peers today are area boys. But because he had a calling, he had a passion, everything turned around and he made his parents and family proud. We are very proud of Allah Shua Abino. And on behalf of, this, of that class, this is our golden tribute to our fallen hero. And suddenly, the beat stopped. The dancers and the thunderous crowd went numb with a deafening silence. The chirping of the birds beat an uncanny retreat. The wind blew furiously and the atmosphere was engulfed in total darkness. The wise and knowledgeable bowed their heads in utter shock and disbelief. Behold, an Iroko tree has fallen. The news hit us like a thunderbolt. A friend, classmate, brother, colleague, Emmanuel Folonsho Abino has gone to answer the call of his creator. If tears could bring him back, donation of buckets of tears will have been spontaneous. If noises would wake him up, voluntary noisemakers will have been hired. If computers have the power to resurrect, we will have bought the future Windows version to do the job. A great pile has departed this world, and we mourn because we have lost a great gem. For Lauren Shaw was a man of peace, a brilliant and rare species of manhood, with an uncommon kindness, a resilient and dogged spirit, an ambitious and resolute human being. He was the pioneer of the computer fad in our class when it was a new terrain was responsible for how some of our classmates had their first stint of computer education at his training center in Ilasa. Being the son of a general of Asia never limited his association with the good, the bad, and the ugly, as his belief was simply that there was a good attribute in everyone if you care to find out. Paul Unsha was never discriminatory. He had a kind word and amiable disposition to everyone. Today, we mourn a great, dynamic, articulate last white, an embodiment of wisdom, a paragon of knowledge, and a selfless scholar. For long sure we we'll go to the library to research into any assignment and we'll make copies of findings for friends. As we mourn, we are comforted by the fact that he knew God, and he preached the salvation of Christ to brethren, and we are consoled by the fact that if his activities here on earth were anything to go by, it is safe to conclude that Fallon Shaw made heaven, and is sitting right in the bosom of the Lord. Adieu, a great friend and a classmate. May your gentle soul continue to find absolute peace and comfort in the bosom of the Lord. On behalf of the entire English Study Students Association, Lagos State University, as a last class of 1993-94, we pray that your soul should continue to rest in perfect peace till we meet to part no more. Adieu, our gentle giant. I want to leave you with this sentence. We're all seated here, looking sober, appearing that we're mourning. But let me ask you a question. If we buy the best Rolls Royce in this world today, can he enter into this casket? That's to tell you about the futility and vanity of life. And like follow Usha, whatever you do, wherever you find yourself, please touch a life. What shall you be remembered for when you go? He has played his part, he has gone. But everything we have said about follow Usha today, they are words of truth because he was a man of peace. Goodbye, our great friend. May the Almighty God console the family and give us all the fortitude to bear this great loss. Thank you and God bless.
Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Bimbola Toki. Uh, because of our time, we're going to, you know, have each one come for two minutes. And please, if you do exit that, we might have to excuse you. Uh, the next person is Brogbe Ngadila Nwa. And then after him, the provost of the Reject Bible School, Pastor Dr. Aino. Praise God. Who will fill the gap? I've known my brother since the 70s with the family. Until Abisi, until Mifun Layo, Sister Ebu, my friend Benga, and Femi. The Lord Almighty God will comfort and console the family in the name of Jesus. Who will fill the gap? One of the sons of our founding fathers, first set of this mission, he called me, he said, Pastor Benga, I'm no more in government. Ah. I said, why? He explained. I said, can you give me the chance to call Boda for lunch? Because I call him Boda. We are together at Ayotuga Mushi. He said, don't call anybody. I'm no more coming to government again. I don't want to mention the name of the church. So he went to that church. Even he told me that uh, he had a call. I said, don't bother. Let me call Boda for lunch now. He said, okay, go ahead and call Boda for lunch. I called Boda for lunch. I said, Egbo, he said, I said, ah, unikilo shele. Muni, Egbo, omo lagba ja, bye, bye, bye. Oh, my, if you go by me, it's like, my brother, law. Ah. But, Ani, Benga, you know what we do? Give me his number and send my number to him. Immediately, I called him. I said, but I said you should call him. He called Boda to cut it short. But that called Pastor I know in Ruben George immediately and called Magodo Center immediately. That month, that brother started with them at Magodo Center, Ruben George. Clap for Jesus. That brother is no more going to that church again. Presently, is now in government. The founding sons, the sons of our founding uh, of this mission. That is number one. Fill in the gap. As I'm talking to you now, I have two of them now. I don't know the person that will fill the gap. The founding sons of our father. The second one, sorry sir. Yes, I will soon finish now. Who will fill the gap? Then, when my mother clocked 70, he called Brother Fallon Shaw that please, I want daddy to pray for me. Brother Fallon Shaw said, Mommy, if you see me, you have seen the father. And Brother Fallon Shaw, my mother told me that Brother Fallon Shaw prayed for her, she did not stop. I will pardon. Let's All right, thank you so very much, uh, Mr. Gwenga Delanwa. Uh, the regent uh, provost, Pastor Dr. J. I know. Praise the Lord. God is good. I transferred to Lagos in 1995. Brought me to a distant acquaintance with Pastor Falorin Shaw Abina at Kekirowo. Precisely 2003, there was a visit made by Daddy, our late mother himself, and a grandchild of the family to see the condition of our church there and what my family was passing through. That day, I started to take notice of him. I didn't hear what he was saying to daddy and mommy, but the compassion on his face was very obvious that I can't forget it today. At Rubenjo Theological Seminary Executive Program, 
I was under his teaching again and again. He knew his subject very well. That is social media and ministry. This year, when preparing for the class, I will ask, do we print your note? He will say no. Between last year and now, there are new developments and we have to upgrade. He was always upgrading. He made silent contributions. He didn't want you to publicize him and his contributions. Impacts matter to him, not self-aggrandizement. From my few interactions with him, I discovered the following. He was a busy person, but then he was available, approachable, humble, and always ready to help. At times, setting aside his personal concern. God is the utmost helper. In the journey of life, I have met two kinds of helpers, the common and the uncommon. The common show the world what they are, that they are helping you, and may show the magnitude of the help, often refer to the help and brag about it. He was an uncommon helper, a person who will help you at the same time respect you and will not refer to it. Few years ago, God used him to rescue me from frosters. He supposed help that was very big and luxury was on my table. He guided me that he didn't he guided me and he didn't fall to the trap. He has left behind a big vacuum. May the Lord fill this vacuum both in the family and the church in Jesus' name. Oh. If you want to clap, please go ahead and do that. We're going to have uh, a few of his friends again, uh, Mr. Inkaola Dujoye, Eda Mike Akoshile. Eda Mike came all the way from the United States to honor this uh, occasion for his friend. Uh, just purposely arrived on, on, was it on Wednesday and is leaving just immediately after this program. So please, let's welcome both of them and engineer J.K. Akiola. I can only just do two, two minutes, and then afterwards we have the family uh, come and give their tribute. And if you've written your tribute in the program, there is no need reading it again. People are going to, you know, I promise you, they are not going to be, uh, somebody said the way to hide anything from a black man is to put it in a book. But I don't think it's like these people. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. Well, I'm glad to be home. I'm about to, if I'm to say, if I'm permitted to say as much as I would like to say, it's going to take time. But let me just say little things. Coming along for a long time. It's not an overstatement to say that mommy grew up together as a sibling. So being a, um, probably, well, the way I call you, being a, uh, able, uh, obviously, let me, mommy, us the same uh, when I say us the same way she treated them in exactly the way she treated me so that made us to be very very close uh, when he was going to nursery school I remember mommy would tell me that after the you know the usual morning prayer I live across the church it's like I was living in the church I actually I slept in the church you know we have silly fans in those in those days so you will not exactly know where Brother Mike was living because I live 
directly across the church and I'm also at the church. So mom will, t- will tell me, oh, um, I will say the way she, she said it. Ah, you know, that is when you are going to work. You know, I was so fortunate I started work at a very little age. Then I will take him and uh, lady drop, I mean, you know, take them to the school then while my work half print Nigeria Limited, I was working in the office at the time. I just walk across there. And it was very, very interesting. It's very fun. Uh, you know, um, all along I knew him as my close brother. And when at Kikiro, when the church at Kikiro was built, it happened again that I'm moving close to church, Kikiro Church. Again, we were very close again. And it was, I mean, I can't, each time I still feel the, the glimpse of, of those days and I wish it could come back. Um, one thing that I want to say that I really learned so much about him, he, is, he was very humble. Very, very. Ah, any, any little thing, sir, sir, sir. Uh, you know, when God lays something in your heart to do, please don't procrastinate. You know, I was trying to get in touch with him, you know, late last year. I couldn't. I told Femi, tell, I mean, excuse me, uh, yeah, Femi, text, you know, tell, you know, tell him that I've been trying to call him. Text me as I can. I, mean, I, don't just, I didn't just know what. I, well, you know what? I would have regretted it if I did not do what the Spirit of the Lord laid in my heart to do. Therefore, brethren, whatever God told, tells you anything, please do it. And um, exchanges of um, Messi- um, text messages was so much I mean, heart broken. Just three lines or four lines, he, he would say, sir, 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 about five times. He was very humble. I love him dearly. Uh, I don't know how to... It's, it still breaks my heart, but the Lord will give us strength all to take it. Amen in Jesus' name. I'm going to invite the children, Ore, Ronia, and David. Uh, they just have sh- uh, just short stuff to say. Come together. Yes. Come on, let's put our hands together for these wonderful seats. I also want to thank God for the life my dad lived. Lived a very good life. Um, was very generous to people, and wasn't really shy or afraid to spread the word of God to anybody, anywhere. People in the gas station usually know if he sees them, you just talk to them. Before you know, it's next week they're in church, stuff like that. And he doesn't share. He would rather buy something he owns, or he rather drop something he owns for church than share it with the church. He doesn't split things like that. And he has a particular um, policy that we use. We don't use things already placed in the hands of church. Things in the hands of church are for for church and church alone. We don't share things like that. And I thank God for the lives he has touched. And it's good to see the lives they are stored today are very good, grown lives. Um, Pastor Shegun and Brad Joshua, they, they are very, very good results of what he has been doing in the hand of God. I know he's in a better place, and God will continue to keep each and every one of us till we meet him in just name. Um, my dad was a great man of God. He's the type of person who can get an, into an argument because of God. And since that when he even gets into the arguments, he'll be full of joy. He'll be full of calmness because he knows that he has already won the argument. He always um, looks for stuff to do because of church. There are days that he'll go sleepless only because he's working on the things of God. He makes sure that everything is perfect because there is nothing else compared to God. The only thing he values 
in life is God and his family. He makes sure that he can bring as much people as as much people as possible to God and he I don't know how to describe him. There are many words to describe him. He's generous, he's kind, he's polite, he's a God sent into our lives. He's the type of man that can he can sacrifice many things just to bring joy into your life. He can take you as his family only to satisfy your needs, to make sure that there is joy into your life. He's a great man in so plenty people's life. He has helped plenty of people. And um, Grish, I'm grateful to be his daughter. Thank you. I want to thank, I want to thank God. Thank God for the life, for the life, the kind of life that my dad lived. I don't really know how to explain him. He's very kind. He, 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 always, he, always, he always wants something to be perfect. Every time, every time I wake up, I always see him doing the work of God. Even, even though it's in the midnight, I will still see him doing the work of God. Every time I will see him doing the work of God, he's Kind, generous, humble, strong, and proud to be his son. Praise the Lord. All right, finally, I'm going to invite the siblings, uh, Dr. Ebu Falokwe and Pastor Amos Falokwe, Brother Femi Abina, Dickness Fumi Fagui and uh, Elder Bingabino. Oh, okay. Uh, I think. Uh, Thank you. Um, so, uh, Pastor Folon Shabino is more than just a friend and a brother to me. I think I doff my heart for him now. Um, it's my, he, he has become my inspiration. I think he has finished well and strong. And it's my prayer that every one of us too we will finish well and strong in Jesus' name. Um, this man you are seeing here, by the special grace of God, he was the moving spirit for the establishment of the government PPS in Abuja. He laid down all his resources way back in 2002. Thank you very much for celebrating. I mean, he was the moving spirit. And apart from putting all his resources down, after the church was planted, Follow Shore was still the rallying force. Uh, number two, uh, being the chairman of the government pilgrimage committee, we went to Rome uh, about two years ago with the DGO leading. This man of God, even though as the son of the general overseer, of the gospel mission is an icon of humility. You saw his picture on the screen wearing the red t-shirt. Follow on show covered everything by himself. He carried the video, the camera, the everything. And I look at him, I say, God, this is a very humble man of God. And then number three is ministration everywhere is par excellence. No time follow on show is ministering I always jot. I find it very difficult even to run as fast as he's speaking. Food for thought. And finally, for following show, I heard yesterday from my sister, Ebon, which is correct. I told my wife about it. Following show was the armor bearer of Baba Bino. As a young man, he went to the battlefront. He carried the armor for Baba and let me tell you, this man you are seeing, he has lived ahead of his time. He's the senior of many people now. May we also finish well and strong in Jesus' name. I want to beg the Gulf TV, uh, uh, please, that is last sermon, which we saw on the screen. 
we are, and we are inviting people to Jesus Christ. If it can be transcribed into a tract, it will immortalize him. Thank you very much. Well, since I am coordinating, let me just say one or two things about my friend. There are things that uh, can all be said uh, here, but let me just say one or two things. First of all, I know that I know he speaks less than he sees. Uh, our relationship is an open book. You know, there are just, uh, there are times that we have to deal with difficult issues together and walk each other through those difficult times. But this is one thing that I want to mention about his life for public consumption that is beautiful. I used to follow him to a place around their house. Some of the people that know him, they, know, they call it the warehouse. It's a place that he's very fond of. You know, for me, the place looked like a junkyard. Every time I go there, the crowd, the stench, the old door, you know, everything from the place. But he's so fascinated about going to that place. Sometimes once, twice a week, he goes to the place. And I watch him, you know, bought a few things here and there from there. And uh, that was a lesson that I learned someday, uh, one day, you know, from our journey there together. And that is the fact that Pastor Fallon Shaw is able to bring out treasure out of unlikely places. You know, he could see people that are nobody and he could turn them around. There was a young man in his church who was smoking marijuana. He would even smell the marijuana in his mouth in the church. But he embraced the young man and is totally a transformed person today because he can, he can pick treasures, you know, out of very, very unlikely places. You know, and we give God all the glory for a wonderful life that he lived. To God be all the glory. In conclusion of the section, I want to invite the, the siblings, uh, Dr. Ebu Falokwe and the husband, Pastor Amos Falokwe. Uh, I also would invite uh, Brofemi Abino, the Kines uh, Fumi Fagui, and uh, Elder Gwing Abino. They're all going to be coming together, uh, but they're going to speak one after the other uh, as we bring this section to a close. Come well, on, let's encourage them. Let's put our hands together for them. Praise the name of Jesus. Um, he said a lot of things about my brother yesterday. I mean, uh, the Bible does not say that we should not mourn. He just told us not to mourn as unbelievers. 
because we have a hope. The death of my brother was a blow to me. Yeah. Told me about it. I know he told me ahead of time, but at the same time, I said, I will have come. I need to come. I need to come. My husband said, even if you go, what are you going to do? I said, I will take care of him myself. He was a worshiper. Just like we always see our parents do, rolling on the floor. As tall as he was, he will be on the floor. Whenever I call him for anything, and when I was going through some challenges, he, he will say, Ebunduro, let's focus on worshiping God. And the atmosphere will change. He was also somebody that will fight, that will go ahead of the battle. You know that you are facing the battle, but he was ready to take the arrow for you. Never jealous of his livings at all. Always like the achievement of his siblings. He will always encourage me. You finish this? Okay, you need to go for another one. You need to go for another one. And I told him, yeah, we are in this school together. We are doing some things. He said, oh, I've left that alone because I have something else to do. Because I'm doing something for government. And he changed many lives. And the Abinos family entirely. We have poor hearts. Emmanuel Lulua for lunch. We pour him out as a sacrificial offering unto the Lord. Was a offering. He was alone. He was alone, given to God. He was alone, given by God to His parents, and He has yielded many dividends. And that is why He can return back to His Maker, because He saw the glimpse of the glory, and He couldn't wait. He wanted to go. Painful as it is, but I am also proud that I am one of his siblings. The word of wisdom for go farming to youth, you will face challenges, you will face opposition. It wasn't that the road was smooth for my brother. It wasn't that he did not face challenges that supposed to debar him from doing the work of the Lord, but he kept his focus. He knew that his time was short and he ran the race. And that was his challenge. This morning, I saw him again, he appeared. He was like, kill and love. And I said, we know we are not there, but I just need to see you for the last time. The charge to the children, that is what he said. Fear the Lord. And remember, in everything, God is always good. That is what your grandfather always writes every day. And even the day that he went to be with the Lord, he still wrote it, God is good to me. O bato ju bo bo ba lo afu ye gege ti ko se gbe jigbini jigbini bi ate ileke ka bi si o mo sibare o bato ju bo bo ba lo o bato ju bo bo ba lo o bato ju bo bo ba lo Kabi si o mo shiba O bato ju o bo ba lo Jesus Praise the Lord So grateful uh, for the privilege of relationship uh, with the great man. Uh, one major thing I found out about him is such a model of a kingdom man. Uh, 
he can sacrifice for the kingdom. Not only that, he wants to see the kingdom of God revealed in every strata of society and people's life. I remember years ago, I think around 1995, this great man was, um, was privileged. He wanted to, God gave him so much insight to take on the security system of the Asso Rock of this country. He wrote a proposal on what he was going to do. I think this was going to be to the tune I knew. Uh, about at that time, I think $1.5 million. But some stuff came up. Whoever the top, they found out about him. And people wanted to, because they wanted him to add some extra to it because they said he quoted low because they are not going to be able to get their own. But because it's a kingdom man, he said no. He was a strong man of integrity. And at the end of the day, they wanted him to change his name so that he can get the project. Because there was no one that could do the project like him. But because of the kingdom, he sacrificed 1.5 million and more dollars at the time. This was way back in the 90s. And you see him in personal relationship, church, things. He want to just pour everything. Whatever he can do for the improvement, advancement of the gospel everywhere. Of course, I'm going to miss him. There are things he was going to help me. It was a few weeks before he passed. He said, I email it to you. Check it. I couldn't find it. He said, I'll send it again. I will send it again. Now I'm wondering. But he did all he could. And we will forever miss him. Our life will never be the same without him. But we are grateful to the Lord for the impact he has left in our lives. Thank you for giving everything. And thank you for being a model of a kingdom life. God bless you all. Praise God. Uh, there's so much to say about my brother, but I'm not going to say too much. Uh, my brother is a person that you may think you have, you know him so much. Then you come out, he will come at you in a different way. Someone that I am very, very proud to call myself his younger brother. You know, um, a wise man once said that the closer you are to God, the lesser everything appears. And that's how my brother lived his life. God means the most to him. And everything else is just nothing. And I appreciate that so much in his life because there are too many shadows in this world. I am very proud that my brother is a light indeed. Everyone that has come up, up to this stage, they have those candles in their hand because he has departed their life. He's not dead yet because there's so much of him that is alive. And when there's so much of you that is alive, nothing can kill you. So I'm not mourning, I'm not sad. Because I know it departed for government to explode. And uh, very soon, you will see the brighter light of government. Thank you very much.
Oh, okay. Praise the Lord. Um, first of all, to God be the glory. Thank the Lord for such a wonderful gift. Um, I miss my brother. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Uh, we were very close. People call us twins. If I record a message and people hear it, when they hear his voice and I'm preaching, they will thought I'm the one preaching. When they hear my voice, so it's the same thing. They say we look alike. We got married the same day. We are the only out of the siblings who have four children. Only God knows how that happened. Um, our children are almost at the same age. So we share a lot of things together. At many critical moments in his life, I was there. Some part of his life, I was in Lagos State University. We were in the same hold-up room in, you know, that place over there. I also knew when he wasn't a Christian. I knew when he was wayward. I know when he was going to disco and all that thing. So, when you, if you don't know him and you see him now working for God and you think this man is after position, is after this. You don't know, it's like somebody, when God snatched him and he said, you know what, this God would did this for me, I must stop at nothing to give it back to him. Come on, give the Lord a hand, come on. So, when you know his story, the fact that people gave up on him, I wrote it there, they said you should go and do a welder. Because a man of the spirit, people don't understand him sometimes. This man is bubbling with ideas. We will talk a lot. We'll talk about kingdom mouse. We'll talk about the prophetic. We can be talking. I will say, the Lord just opened my eyes. And I just saw this, 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 this. And we can talk for hours and hours on God for me. When he was appointed ESCO, he said, I can't sleep. He said, God is just giving me ideas on God for me. How to do this. How to do that. And I understand what. Because he knew that we have the same kingdom and spirit. And he will be telling me, okay, this is what we're going to do next. For um, we want to do the financial empowerment. What he detests anybody who, who is serving God for gain. He doesn't like people who are serving God for gain. He doesn't like anyone who is not passionate about soul winning. He doesn't like anyone who think they have arrived. Lately, we were talking about the, the the fact that the fathers they've accomplished more than people that are taking over. And I was talking to him. I said. What, what I'm learning from my father and all the fathers of government is that there's an anointing that is resident in this illiterate man that exploded 300 to hundreds of thousands. And I said, if I was a pastor, I, come on, give the Lord a hand if you want to do it. I said, if I was the pastor, and I was talking, I said, I will go to my own father, which I've done before. I said, Daddy, lay your hands on me. The same thing that God made you explode. Out of everybody else, put your hand upon my head. That is the way we, we used to relate. So when I see him and he will run apart, he said, Benga, want to, he called me Guiz. Guiz, we need to do this. We need to do this. Oh, I want you to help me to do this. I'm, when he was in business, when it was about marriage, when it's about anything else, I was there. We were that close. When he first, I mean, actually, the Lord told me in February 1st that I was going to go. And he wasn't even sick. I didn't mention it to him. I just told my siblings, I said, the Lord told me that, but that is going to go. Let's start praying for him. And I didn't, we didn't mention anything. But this is a man that wasn't afraid of death. This is a man that was, so, you saw him, he was sold out to God. There's nothing that makes him afraid. He was, he loved his parents. You know that. He so loved his parents. He found himself like this is the reward of these people that have been waiting for years. And I believe so that the first student that, two children that died, God now combined their intelligence and put it in him. That's not, this year he was supposed to launch his, because the Lord told me something and I told him, this year he was supposed to launch his cryptocurrency. That's how brilliant the man was. Any subject you tell him, you say, oh, I know about this. And he'll tell you, oh, Benga, this is what you need to do. This is what you need to do. Go and do this. And as a roundup, if you want to read more, read my tribute. I wrote about when he used to catch crab with his bare hands. That's another thing. A few years ago, daddy said, he said, Benga, and he called my brother too. He said, you guys are not close as before. I don't like you. You're not close. I wanted to say something. That, daddy, but, but I can't. 
when daddy says something, whether it's right, I just believe it. Because experience has worked that this man is a master prophet. Whenever he say, whether, just stay, I say, okay, daddy. And I started calling him, not knowing that daddy by one way know that this man has a long, a short life. And I'm, I'm very, very grateful to God. I'm very, very grateful to people that are here to celebrate and appreciate my brother. It's a good thing. Thank you very much. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Give God the glory for such an occasion like this for the celebration of the life of our brother. I have the honor to bring the, to the microphone the speaker for today who is going to feed up with the word of the Lord. But before I do that, paradoxically, I want to introduce to you in absentia the presence of the national president of the Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria, Bishop Francis Walioke. Um, he sent me a personal message this morning to deliver to our father that his mind is with our father and we have loved to be here personally, but because he has a very heavy schedule, he couldn't really make it. He's ably represented by the Southwest General Secretary, Pastor, no, sorry, Pastor. Uh, Tony, sorry, I know what I'm saying. Yeah, I know what I'm saying. Pastor Tony Kende, God bless you. He has been delegated to represent the national president of the Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria and also assisted or accompanied or double delegated together is our national administrative secretary, Pastor Akinwale Akeola. God bless you. You are very much welcome. That national administrative secretary, of the Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria. Today we have the man that will bring out the word. Um, seriously, he's a member of this church by the grace of God. He's a well-respected man of God with integrity and honor. He given two hours to preach, he will use it very well. But today he doesn't have two hours. He has a very short time. And so you need to run with him. Hallelujah. I know that this man uh, had a connection with government. But I never knew the detail until I was with him early this year in his church to, for administration. And then he went to introduce me to the congregation, a very large congregation of Trem. And he told them, people in Trem, you thought you made me. I came to Trem as a pastor. I was made by government. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands for the Lord Jesus. He said, so he said, the man speak, going to speak now is from my own church. That is government. That was how he introduced me. Um, do me to welcome today? Do before he takes over the microphone and land. Uh, what's the name again? Omoma Jamu will give us a song. We have the immediate past vice president of Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria for Southwest, and who doubles as the Bishop of Trem for the South Southwest covering the sisters. Join me to welcome after this special presentation by Omama Jemu, Bishop Ruben. Okay. God bless you, sir. So just before you come over, you have Omama Jemu want to give her a song just for three minutes. Three minutes. Omama Jemu, where are you? Omama Covenant, is he around? Come on. Okay, if you can't find him, can we rise on our feet, jump our hands together to welcome Bishop Ruben Oke, who's going to give the word. Come on, your hand together. Your hand together. You are welcome, sir. Please lift it above, above your head and put it together for Jesus. I said for Jesus. It's worthy to be praised. No matter what happens, Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Please.
Be seated. I bring you very special greetings today in the name that is above every name, the name Jesus Christ of Nazareth, our Savior and our soon coming King. My very special condolences to the Abino family first and foremost and to the entire government family. I want to thank you, the pastorate, the, 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 the burial committee, and especially Dr. Okomalein for giving me this opportunity to minister the word in this very special occasion. Ordinarily, ordinarily, it should be a thing of joy for me um, coming to government, any pulpit of government, for that matter, to minister the word of God. However, this is a very solemn occasion, and um, we still thank God. Praise the Lord. And the reason I said that is, this is my root. Uh, many people don't know that. I gave my life to Christ uh, at, God, at the Gospel Faith Mission. More Assembly, Ileife, back in 1974, when I was in Form 2. And that was some 47 years ago. Precisely by September, it will be 47 years when I met Jesus Christ under Pastor Ogumola. I was baptized in water by the late Pastor M.A. Paul, he baptized me in water. So, I'm a member of the house. <laughs> you know, God does his things in wonderful ways. God brings people to different ministries for different reasons. Sometimes he brings somebody into a ministry because that is his home. Till um, eternity begins. Sometimes... For some people to be trained and released and to do some exploits for the kingdom. Nevertheless, I am forever grateful to God and to the government family. Praise the Lord. Quickly, I want to read from Second Samuel. Second Samuel chapter twelve. It's a well-known story, and because of my time, I, I will just, um, at, from verse 16, Second Samuel chapter 12, um, from verse 16, David therefore besought God for the child, and David fasted, and went in and lay, uh, all night upon the earth. You know the story. David's son was sick. And um, was um, David um, prayed and prayed and fasted and waited on the Lord. Um, but eventually, the child died. Um, let me now jump down to verse 23. My text actually covers verse 16 to 23, but I'll just read verse 23 because of time. David said, but now he is dead. Wherefore should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he shall not return to me. Precious Holy Spirit, breathe upon these words. These few minutes we are spending together. Let your word bless your people in Jesus' name. The word I have for us in this great assembly this afternoon is this. Put it 
behind you. I say that first and foremost to Pa Abino, that's the way I, I always refer to him, Pa Abino's family. I know it's hard, I know it's tough, I know it's difficult, but put it behind you. I say to every member of government family, put it behind you. It's difficult. Whoever says it's not difficult, a difficult thing to do, um, I don't know what to recommend to him. Here was a strange thing in this text that I read to you. David, his son, was sick. And like any parent, any father will do, he prayed, he fasted, he lay down all night, he wouldn't eat. And all of a sudden, the child died. And when the child died, the people were afraid. How do we break the news to him? When the child was sick, he wouldn't eat. What will happen if we now tell him that the child is dead? The Bible says, while these movements were going on, David knew that the child died. So he called one of them and said, is the child dead? They said, yes. He asked them to give him water. He went to the bathroom, he washed himself, he asked for food, he ate. He went to the house of the Lord and worshipped. They said, we cannot understand you. When the child was alive, you fasted, you prayed, you did all that, you wouldn't eat. How come you are doing this now? He said, the child has gone. He will not come back to me. I will be the one that will go to him. It's a very hard truth. But our brother has gone home to be with the Lord. If we could pray and God could grant our request and he wakes up now, he will ask us, why are you being wicked? Why are you being mean to me? Why do you bring me back from there to here? He will not come back. My presiding bishop told me a story some years ago. The late Reverend Kenneth E. Hagin, one day, his wife looked at him and said, Ken, if you go out and you come back and you found me dead, what would you do? Well, at first, the man didn't want to answer. He took it as you know, sometimes when women want to start their thing, why are you asking me that kind of question? He said, Ken, come back here. Yeah. If you go out and you come back and find me dead, what will you do? Can I take a look at her? I said, if I go out and come back and I found you dead in the house, I will go to my room. I will get my best suit. I will wear it and go to the best restaurant in town and I will go and eat. And the wife said, what? You will do that? He said, yes, I will do that. He said, she said, why? And he said, because you made it. Our brother made it. What we have here is not him. He's gone. Praise the Lord. Here is, here is what I'm trying to put across. David and Kenneth Hagin. Thousands of years separated them. But there's something common with them. There's something they knew that most people today don't know that affects us in times like this. What is it that they, that they knew? What did David know that many people don't know today? Number one, he knew he had done his best to keep the child alive. I am sure that when our brother was alive, if he was sick, people could pray, pray. I'm sure if he was sick, you probably took him to the hospital. You do your best. I mean, you did your best. Probably, if, um, if he was sick, you contributed money. You wanted him to leave. But at the end of the day, he passed on. 
Men and brethren, you have done your best. There is nothing more you could have done. Praise the Lord. You have fasted. You have prayed. You have refused to eat. You have wept. Yet, we are where we are today. So I encourage you, be of good courage. Number two, David knew that it was not in his power to keep his child alive. We wish that our brother lived, but it's not in our power to make him to stay here. And as I read through my Bible and history, I have discovered that such is life. As I read through my Bible, I read in the book of Genesis, I'm particularly interested in the last chapter and the last verse. And the Bible says, and so jo Joseph died and he was buried and he was, he was put in a coffin in Egypt. That's how the book of creation ended. The, the book that started with creation and told us everything, how, the, the life, how every life began, it ended with death. And then I thought about Joseph. Here was a man that saved the whole world of his time. Yet, when death came to his door, he could not say no. I read about a man, a medical doctor, Dr. Jonas Salk, that invented the polio vaccine. He saved millions of lives. But when death came, he could not so save his own life. He surrendered. Sir Alexander Fle Fleming. Alexander Fleming invented the penicillin. That was what saved Sir Winston Churchill when he was a young boy and he had pneumonia. He saved Alexander. Uh, he saved Winston Churchill. He saved so many lives. But when death came, he couldn't save himself. I know this brother. I have listened to the testimonies. Many lives have been touched. Many lives have been saved by him. Yet, when death came knocking, he could not resist. Because it is not in anybody's power to resist. Many great doctors have saved many lives. And yet, they have gone to the great beyond themselves. In 2 Kings chapter 13, verse um, Verse 14, I read something, you know, something very strange. You know Elisha, how anointed he was. Second King chapter 13, verse 14, the Bible says, Now Elisha was falling sick of his sickness, whereof he died. Elisha. With the double portion of the anointing of Elijah. Oh, so anointed people die. Oh, yes, they do. Because the anointing does not insulate Against sickness. I mean against death. He died. Elisha. So I said that to say, because sometimes in times like this, all oh, people ask all kinds of questions. Some reasonable, some very, very unreasonable. Why should a man of God die? Oh, his father is a Jew. Oh, all his brothers are all born again, talk talker. So what? Elisha died. The Archbishop Benson in Daosa. He died with all the anointing on him. Obadari died. You and I too will die. I know we don't like to hear that. That's a, you and I will die. <laughs> Man cannot stop death. Money cannot stop death. Medical science cannot stop death. Technology does not stop death. Connection does not stop death. May I also tell you that charms cannot stop death. You will die. Quickly because of time. <laughs> Number three. David knew where the child had gone to and he wanted to be there too. He said, but now, Second Samuel 20, 12, 12, 23, but now he is dead. Wherefore should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he shall not return unto me. Our brother, too, has gone home to be with the Lord. Where he has gone to, we should want to go. He has gone to the presence of the Lord. 
he has gone to heaven. Heaven. The, I, I, read, I read Revelation chapters 21 and 22, and I love heaven. A place of joy. No night. No darkness. No suffering. No weeping. No tears. Nobody ever went there regretting. Nobody. I've read through my Bible. Nobody, be it in the Bible or outside the Bible, nobody has ever gone to heaven regretting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can quote to you people again and again, I mean, scores of them who has one thing to, or the other to say on their deathbed. Let me give you this one. A man by the name D.L. Moody, few hours before entering his eternal home, he caught a glimpse of the glory of God awaiting him. And D.L. Moody said, Earth recedes. Heaven opens before me. If this is dead, it is sweet. There is no valley here. God is calling me and I must go. His son was with him. His son cried. He shouted, No, father, no. You are dreaming. The El Moody replied, No, I am not dreaming. I have been within the gates. I have seen the children's faces. After a short time, the El Moody spoke one more time. This is my triumph. This is my coronation day. It is glorious. I believe that's what our brother saw. That's what he saw. That's why, that's why he preferred to enter. He entered the glory. But on the, other, on, the, on the other end is a place called fire. Hell is opposite of heaven. No one ever went there rejoicing. Again, I could tell you the last words of many infidels, people who knew not God. You have heard about the man, Voltaire, the French atheist, who swore that within a short time, he was going to wipe away, he was going to, he was going to burn the last page of the Bible. God is humorous. In a short time, he died. And his own printing press was converted to a place where nothing is printed but the Bible. Upon his deathbed, listen, listen to him as he cried out, Oh, Christ! When he, when he was there, he said there was no Christ. But he cried, Oh, Christ! Oh, Jesus! I must die abandoned by God and men. His condition was so frightening that his infidel associates were said to have run away from his bedside. Voltaire then said to his doctor, I am abandoned by God and man. I will give you half of what I am worth if you will give me six months of life. The doctor replied to him, Sir, you cannot even live six weeks. Voltaire immediately answered, Then I shall go to hell and you will go with me. Another man by the name Brown, as he was dying, he said, devils are in the room, ready to drag my soul down to hell. It is no use looking to Jesus now. It is too late. And I'm brethren, our brother has gone to eternity. Eternity? The only way our only gateway there, apart from rapture, is through death. We want to go to heaven. If I ask everybody here who wants to go to heaven, every hand will be up. Who wants to die? Every hand will be, die, will be down. The fact is that we will die. That's the only way we get to heaven. That's the only way. Except rapture comes. Rapture can happen anytime, any moment. I encourage you, if you have not made Jesus the Lord of your life, give him your life today. Eternity is nothing to be toyed with. As I listened to him, to all the testimonies and watched him, as I sat down there, 
I remember this song that my choir sings, and I just want to close with it. I'm through with the message. I'm done. My choir sings this song. Don't mind my voice. I'm not too good of a musician or a singer. I only preach. I only teach. Gayemi, oh Baba. Baba, Gayemi. Oh, Romi, Baba. Atoso, Atale. Lo, one for year. Lo, one for go. Olu onu jowo ye o agba ye mi ga ye mi o baba mo fi si le fun o ga koko mi ki won kun fun iyin re ga ye mi o baba mo fi si le fun o ga koko mi ki won kun fun iyin re Let us pray. Almighty God, we want to thank you so much for the message that you have brought to us on this occasion. We want to thank you because of the celebration of the life of your servant that you decided to call to yourself. We appreciate you, King of Glory, because he has left an indelible mark. He has left challenges for us. He has left an example for us. Father, to you be the glory in the name of Jesus. Your servant here has also spoken today concerning the fact that at one point or the other, we shall be called home. I pray for every one of us that has listened here today, that the word that we have heard today, you will use it to challenge us to be more active, to be more prepared for any time you shall call us home. Father, let it be so, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Your servant here will have testimonies. We have assurance that he has finished well. The baton has been passed on to us now. I pray for every one of us that I have had today. I pray for the grace, for the strength, for everything we need, for us to be able to run the, the race according to your stipulated pattern so that we will end at the feet of Jesus. Thank you, Father Almighty. Father, we commit your servant to your hands. I'm asking for more anointing, more spiritual refreshment upon his life upon his ministry, that Lord God, he will not do this work in vain, but to grant him the grace to be able to end well. Father, do so, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father Almighty. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey. We are night term 19, and I want to invite Tunde Benjamin. As we are getting set for special song, we never say goodbye. 
which will be played to us. Tunde Benjamin, can you come over as sir? We get set for, we never say goodbye. Praise the Lord. Um, I'm going to sing a song right now. And uh, the person who inspired me when I wrote this song is Uncle. Uncle Follow and Show Abino. May you be blessed as you listen. From my heart going up we got help I'm gonna make it work in this year I'm finishing strong God has made me super victory from my heart I'm going up with God's help. I'm gonna make it work in this year. I'm finishing strong. Cause God has made me super victorious. VIC. Oh, how I victory, I've got victory. V-I-C-T, oh, how I victory, sing, I've got victory. Sing, from my heart, I'm going up. With God's help, I'm going to make it work. Because in this year, I'm finishing strong. God has made me super victorious. From my heart, from my heart, I'm going up. Come on, everybody, sing that song with me. Say we God's help, I'm gonna make it work. I'm gonna make it because in this year, I'm finishing stronger. Sing, God has made me, God has made me super victorious. And the letter says, V high C, -C O R O I. Victory, sing I've got victory. We sing V I C T O R O I. Victory, I've got victory. V I C T O R O I. Victory, I've got victory, yeah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, we want to render a special song, which was specially demanded by the family. And this song we want to render was first rendered at the barrier of the founder of this church in 1987 during the barrier of late Pastor Dr. Ari George. And this will be followed by Hallelujah Chorus immediately. Thank you.
Amen. Amen. ke oluwa wa ma bo awon ara kunrin wa ati awon ara birin wa nko ni bo ni won wa won ti lo siwaju wa awon bi olusho agun ton pastor dr are george ajin rere arji akako iran se olorun sode inde iran se olorun arti omo tosho Olusha Agunton, Oma Jugwagbe, Evangelist Sorimo Ogunje, Ati Bebe be Lo, Mama Wanko, Mama Wa Felicia Abinonko, Awana Ati Lo Shua Juwa, Be Ni Arakone Wa, Emmanuel, Polo Nun Shua Abinon, Mwa Ati Lo Shua Juwa, Of all, the giver of all is also the taker of all. 
Job recognized that in the book of Job chapter 1 verse 21. He said the Lord gave and the Lord took it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I am crazy about God. I'm ready to die because of Jesus. There is nothing that I can't do because of Jesus. I'm addicted to him. Shall we all stand up for Hallelujah Chorus?
bless you. Well, the family of Pastor Dr. Yamino, God bless you. Thank you very much. Goodbye in heaven. We'll never say goodbye for in that land of joy and song we'll never say goodbye. Nation, Son, and Nigeria Tribune, we appreciate your coming. And all our fathers in the Lord. At this point, we want us to, to know that interment follows immediately after the benediction at Ogumaki Gospel City. No Esco members, the regional pastors, and the family alone are expected to follow the corpse for the interment. At this point, I have the honor of Bringing up our Father and the Lord, the Deputy General Overseer of this mission, for the benediction before we have the recessional here. Please, we want to repeat the announcement we made yesterday. Uh, please put it on the screen. The endowment fund account that the church has opened. For, on behalf of our pastor, that is it on the board. We want you to write it down. We're not going to call anybody out now. But please take note of this. One thing you can do to appreciate the impact our pastor has made in your life, in my life, in our life, is by doing something that will bless the children. You see, the children are young. Do something very significant. People have already started doing something putting something in that account, we want you to please do that at your own convenience. We're not going to call you out, but please take note of the account. Individually, family, corporate bodies, you know, districts, churches, denominations, you will be blessed as you do so. God bless you. I say God bless you. All right? Uh, I think we, no other announcement. Shall we rise up as we close this service? We want to thank our, 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 our servant of God from um, uh, um, Trem, uh, Bishop Ruben Oke. He's based in Abekuta, overseeing the southwest region of Trem. We are so much grateful. On behalf of our general overseer, we thank you for coming. Let's please appreciate him. Thank you for your message. Thank you for coming. And all great servants of God in the house that we cannot mention, PFN National uh, Secretariat, thank you for coming. God bless you all. Shall we pray as we close this service? What a glorious service. Choir, thank you also. Father, we bless your name. You started with us. Lord, we thank you for bringing us to this level. Thank you, Lord, for the remaining item of the program, the interment. We know you will see us through. You will take control. You have been glorified since three days we started this program. And you will continue to be glorified to the end. Lord, receive our praise in Jesus' name. I say receive our praise in Jesus' name. Father, we ask, O oh God, that your blessing will rest upon those who will be traveling. Your presence will go with all of us wherever we are going. We ask, O oh God, that you watch over your church. You watch over this family. You watch over all where we shall. Those who are watching online, Lord, we ask that your presence will be, them, be with them also. Thank you, Lord, for taking control. Everybody say, thank you, Jesus. Lord, the atmosphere, the weather, everything has been good. We are grateful. We are not taking it for granted. Receive our praise, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. And as we go once again, Lord, may your presence go with us. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with us now and forevermore. The church can say better, amen.
Please don't go out until the cup leaves. Let's observe that. Don't go out until the cup leaves. Shall we recite our anchor together? One, two, go. We who trust in the Lord shall be like Mosiah. We shall not be moved, but abide forever. Amen. 2021 is our year of supernatural prosperity. God bless you. Shall we take our program and open to page 9, item 22, the processional hymn. Item 22, page 9 of our program. The orchestra will give us the introduction. Thereafter, we sing chapter verse 1 and the chorus. Then thereafter, the corpse will leave. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansion, bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. After his stanza, there will be interlude. Jesus sing his mercy and his grace in the mansions bright and blessed he prepare for our place when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing to be we shall all See Jesus will sing and shout a little rain. While we walk the previous part, we clasp with our spirit red the sky. But when traveling, never. Shadow not a sight when we all go to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that we pay when we all see Jesus will sing and shout the victory. Faithful, trust in seven every day. Just one glimpse of Him in glory will the twice of life repay. When we all go to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that we pay. When we Jesus will sing a shout of victory. Oh! 
Someone's lost a phone. You lost your phone. Please see the ushers to ask thereafter. Thank you. <laughs>